Welcome to Tea Time with Julie. This is another one of my failures right here. It had a tiny pinhole on the inside, so I had to keep it. Rats. And another one with lots of sort of, some kind of irregularity on the inside. But I love this cup. What else is cool? <laughs> I've been dreading having this conversation. <laughs> I'm moving out of my pottery studio. It turns out that sometimes when you get everything you always wanted, it doesn't end up being what you wanted. I got this studio. Well, I will say there were some things about it that weren't right from the beginning. I wasn't able to have a pottery kiln on site. So I never did buy a bigger pottery kiln. I kept the little one in my garage and I've been taking my pottery to a pottery service in Arlington, which is actually awesome because I do not have to babysit a pottery kiln. What I found people wanted most from me with my pottery studio was to come in and do pottery classes. For me, that was way more work and I didn't end up getting to focus on what I wanted to make. It's kind of a situation of sharing where I just don't want to share. <laughs> Isn't that awful? I did a worksheet, which I'm totally willing to share with you if you want a copy of this worksheet. I made a gross margin calculator. It's just an Excel spreadsheet. You can use it in Excel or Google Sheets. I put in the number of students in the class, how much they cost me per student in materials, how much um, if I paid myself for labor, which I just don't really calculate labor because I haven't been taking a paycheck. At the end, of the gross mar margin calculator, I wasn't quite making the margin that I wanna make. So your profit margin is the amount of money that you make after your materials and your employee cost, not your rent or your electric or any of that stuff. You wanna be making more than 80% gross profit margin so that you have extra money left over in order to advertise for more students and then scale your business. George, you scared me. I talk about scaling a business that means growing. So any business that just stays at the baseline isn't scaling. So scaling a business means adding employees and having your business grow exponentially to where you actually need a marketing director and maybe an HR person and a this and that, whatever. It means that it grows and growing a business is a business that can be sold and can operate without the principal. So the like some people end up hiring a CEO sometimes because they don't want to run the business anymore or someone else is more skilled at being a CEO. The CEO of a company is the one who's the visionary. The point is I opened my studio never with the intention of, of growing it. Well, I mean, so there was this odd hope that it would just do so well that it would be easy to hire a person to do this and hire a person to do that. But there, I never figured out an actual product with a proper gross profit margin in order to grow in that way and be scalable for my business, which it doesn't go out of business just because I close my location. It's still an online store. I either have to have uh, service people making things for me, which I did sort of, I had a couple. Someone who helped me with my accounting. I had a person who helped me with my website. I have a person who fires my pottery for me and a person who prints um, printed, pro printed products for, oh, well, two different companies or three. I have two suppliers that print tumblers for me, one supplier that does t-shirts. And so I have all these, all these people and I have a, a person who does a um, custom jewelry jobs for me and a person who does um, cast jewelry items for me. My version of scaling is just jobbing out different jobs. I even hired somebody to draw something for me, which is funny for being a person who draws a lot, but I don't draw that thing. <laughs> I find people that are more skilled than I am to take over some of the jobs of the business. Being tied to a studio location was kind of hard for me. It's easier when you're a potter to live on site with your pots because you can just run outside and flip them over if they, you need to dry the bottom out and then you can wait, do stuff inside, do your life, and then go back out at random times and do the little pieces that you need to do. So that makes it much easier, much easier to live on site with your stuff because of the nature of pottery. So I was doing some painting down at the studio. I was getting extremely distracted with a lot of other, a lot of other stuff. So the big moneymaker over there was the classes. I had an art student 
that I was seeing at the studio. It was really enjoyable, but it wasn't a big, it wasn't a big profitability thing. And I was selling some, you know, some merchandise, but not a ton. And mostly because the people who would buy stuff from me were the people that were coming in for classes. And I wasn't hosting very many classes. Filling up classes is a pain in the butt. The marketing angle is really hard. When I Once I figured out how to appeal to people in classes, I was already really done with wanting to do classes. And that kind of, that kind of, stunk i figured out like what class i could manage and that was the paint your own pottery class where i buy stoneware pottery in and people put on underglazes and then i showed them how to put clear coat on i made the mistake i put the clear coat on for the students after they left which further costed me time but it gave them a really better experience of the class because they had longer to make their their piece is really beautiful to mess them up. I filmed this this way and I probably should have filmed it this way for YouTube. <laughs> so many people watch your watch videos from their phones now that I think it's okay to film a video this way. Let me know. When our lease came up, they raised our rent just a little bit and they wanted two more years. A lease contract, actually, we fought them to get it down to two years and they were like, no. So my partner uh, in crime, who is, uh, she owns her own studio, but she shared the space with me. She decided to move to a place closer to her home. It doesn't have room for a kiln, so I definitely don't wanna do it for that reason, but the other reason is I'm just way more comfortable doing pottery out of the tiny pottery shed. Ignore the random chickens. This is my tiny pottery shed. It's 80 square feet. It does not have running water, but it does have electric and it has AC. I bring in a heater when I need it. It's really cute in there. Let's go down and just see it down there. So 80 square feet is much easier to clean. It's all painted white, which just makes everything look beautiful in the videos. And I can store five gallons of water out here. So I'm really actually looking forward to moving the pottery studio back in here and Sometimes if I make a mess and I want to just come clean later, I can just come back and clean later. That other place had a floor that was dark and it showed everything. I was constantly mopping it. And mopping, turns out mopping a thousand square feet is a lot more work than mopping 80 square feet. Who knew? I'm excited, but I just wanted to tell you like how I made that decision. It was really hard. I actually had to get all the way down to making a pro and con list. It was rough. It was, I, and I, I did cry because it was hard and I'm afraid I'm gonna miss it because like we had some really fun parties down there. And honestly, my ego about having a legitimate storefront kind of business, it, it wasn't a real storefront. It didn't have any windows except for in the door, but like it was kind of a storefront business and I could meet people there instead of at my house. And that was cool, but Oftentimes it was also an inconvenience as a result. So I hope that you will be happy to find out that I'm gonna start making videos again because I should have time now. Not only the time that was wasted like driving back and forth between the studio and setting up and cleaning up classes and managing my life around having, you know, two locations. That, that gives me a little time, but there's more time in, no, that's about it. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's little discussion and I hope to get back here with you and start making more videos. Underglaze transfers and I forget what else I was gonna, what other videos I was gonna do. I love doing glazing videos. I wanna do more sculptures and I am building something that's really exciting and I forgot to tell you until now, I am building a prototype of an automaton and I'm hoping to find some people like you maybe, if you're a potter, that can test the product for me after I build it. And so it's an automaton potter. I saw somebody made one. Mine's gonna be a different kind of rigging, but it's also gonna be an automaton potter. And I think if I can make it just right, I can make it be also a stencil that you can use to build your own automatons from. So you could take the little pieces out, trace them in clay, fire those clay pieces 
and build an automaton that you could have on your pottery table and really attack, attract people to your own pottery when you do pottery shows and stuff like that. And if you're willing to test this thing when I get it, you could start, I'm gonna keep a list. You can message me um, or uh, email me at julie at tinychickpottery.com and just tell me, hey, when you get that thing, I would love to test it. And I'll start a list. I'd love to have, like collect email addresses so I can let you know when it's ready and get an address for you so I can ship you the item to try out. And then that is, you know, maybe, maybe we could start like a little group or something, maybe on Facebook. We can have a Facebook group where we can go over, like, I'll show you the progress of, of where it's at and what I think it, the build will be like. And then you can give me feedback before I ever even build the product. You can be part of the building process if you want. Just, you know, if that's something you want. So, okay. I love y'all. I'm so excited to be getting back into making videos again. And I hope you're having a great day. Oh, thank you so much for all your subscribes, your likes, and your comments. I really look forward to reading the comments all the time. And, you know, this is a really great group. So I'm really glad you're here.